right, this is Black Handprint Mafia. I'm RJ Roger, and what we're gonna talk about today is Mikey Scars Di Leonardo, a guy I find very interesting. Um, he has a very rich history, traces back a long way in Costa Nostra, and I think he's someone that we should really take a look at, understand his psyche, understand where he comes from, understand what his, uh, you know, what his power was in the family. Um, I got a video on my channel where I talk about, uh, Jackie knows D'Amico. I've called him the last living Don. Um, and what I mean when I say stuff like last living Don, last capo, stuff like that. What I mean is there, you know, we're getting to a point where, where a lot of the people that have a connection to the glory days, the, uh, you know, when, when Cosa Nostra was at its height of power, where they were very influential when the upper world, they had control over politicians, control over judges and things like that, control over the police department, big industry, unions and things like that. Um, a, a lot of the people who were around during that time were running out of those men. A lot of them were dead in jail or um, stuff like that or cooperated or so how we research Costa Nostra, how we look at Costa Nostra will change over the years to come because the, 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 the people are not going to be there anymore. Um, so we'll be, uh, we'll get to a point that we are researching and looking at old times without living people anymore, without people around that we can hear things from. So Mikey Scars de Leonardo. Okay. So, you know, by his own, omission by his words he says that his family traces back over 200 years all the way back to sicily before the sicilians came to the u.s um he talks about how his grandfather his family was some of the founding members of the main onera the black hand so if um i don't know how much everyone knows about the black hand but cosa nostra in many ways, was born out of the Black Hand. Um, the Black Hand was the first real organized, collected group of Sicilians that were working together with um, uh, the values and kind of the teachings of Sicily. Um, they largely preyed upon their own when they came over here in America. Uh, Italian businesses were extorted, firebombed. There were little Italian girls that were kidnapped and held for ransom. There was a lot of kind of ugly history that connects to the black hand, all right? Um, Mikey talks about how his family, people in his family were with those um, early members of the black hand, all right? So Mikey was raised in the Bensonhurst, Brooklyn area. I think he was born in the 1950s, 1955. And he's the grandson of Jimmy D. Leonardo, Vincenzo Jimmy D. Leonardo. Um, and where Mikey has a very rich history is that he was raised in Jimmy D. Leonardo's house, all right? Um, Jimmy D. Leonardo, there's very little known about him. We didn't know a lot about him. I wasn't able to find a photograph of him. I wasn't able to really find any information about him. The information that we know about him has largely come from Mikey Scars and the things that he shares. Um, I found a few little things, but I wasn't able to really find much information about him. But this Jimmy D. Leonardo... He was a soldier under Salvatore D'Aguila, Dotto D'Aguila. D'Aguila, like I talked about before, he was the founding guy, the guy who founded the Gambino family. Um, but Salvatore D'Aguila was the gumbada to Vincenzo Jimmy Di Leonardo. Um, so I will get into talking about some things about uh, Jimmy, but I want to talk about Dagula and his importance with Cosa Nostra. Okay. So Dagula, who was Dagula? Again, he's the guy that started the Gambino family, but where does he come from? All right. He was 
at the time, if you looked at it today, he would be called a capo regime, okay? But capo regimes, that title didn't even exist at the time that Dogwiller was working in the Morello family. But if you looked at it today, that's what he would have been to Giuseppe Morello, okay? So Giuseppe Morello, he was one of the, he was the first major boss of this country. Um, people say he was the first boss of bosses. Um, the first guy that controlled the whole country. I don't know that he probably, I'm sure he had a significant, he wielded significant influence around the country. Not sure if he really controlled the entire Italian underworld, but it's possible people say that. But he is credited with being the first Gapo de Duti Gapi, boss of bosses, okay? So Morello was very big, and you had this other guy, Ignazio Lupo, Lupo the Wolf. He was a major black hand extortionist guy. He had a big group, and Morello had a big group, and those two people came together to form what was, at that point, the biggest group in the country. They didn't call them families and stuff like that. Back then, it was more commonly said as maybe a clan or a gang or an outfit. Outfit was commonly used. That's what Lucky used, outfit. Um, but Morello and Lupo kind of controlled everything. And one of their captains or skippers or lieutenants or, or capos, whatever you want to call it, one of the powerful guys under Giuseppe Morello was Salvatore D'Aguila, Dotto D'Aguila, nicknamed Dotto. Um, there were other guys like Joe the Boss Mazzaria. He was another guy who worked for Morello. He was also a capo in the Morello family. But Dagwala, who worked for these two lunatics, essentially, you know, Lupo and Morello were very different in how they, uh, how Dagwala saw what could be of the underworld, okay? So, now a little bit about Morello. Morello was powerful in the U.S., but he was not powerful in Sicily. He was actually a low-ranking guy in Sicily. Um, he was a hard knock gunslinger, the kind of guy who was sent out to do hard knock crimes, go commit a murder. The boss sent me to go do this. So um, not powerful over there, but powerful over here. So um, with that, you get a lot of what came from Morello, the, the uh, famous barrel murders. Um, it's an iconic photo, you know. Uh, the 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 U.S. press never saw brutality like that. Somebody kill two people, stuff them in a barrel. That was not things that were we were accustomed to seeing. Um, and uh, Giuseppe Morello did stuff like that. Very public things. He had a very uh, large counterfeiting operation. Um, so Morello and Lupo get busted, and I think 1910 they went off to jail. And uh, Morello's brothers tried to hold on and keep the organization running um, on behalf of Morello. But D'Aguila broke off. Getting away from these lunatics, he broke off and started his own outfit, clan, whatever you want to call it, family. He broke off. That group that D'Aguila set up is what stands today as the Gambino family. All right. And then D'Aguila became very, 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 very powerful, extremely powerful, where he was controlling everything that was going on around the country. He rose to be more powerful than Morello. He was placing people in different families around the country um, to be able to funnel information, excuse me, to be able to funnel information through. He could receive information, give information, give orders and, and things like that. So Dagwala became very, very powerful. He was controlling it, controlling everything. Dagwala has a guy in his uh, family who he was very, very close with. He was the, and he was his Goombada. That man is Vincenzo Jimmy Di Leonardo. All right. That's how far back. Now, the time period I'm talking about, so uh, Jimmy DiLeonardo, according to Mikey Scars, came to this country at about age 15, okay? Um, and Dagwala was much older. Um, and he was schooling and teaching Jimmy 
taught Jimmy a lot, taught Jimmy. Uh, he, he gave, he reinforced the value system that Jimmy already came to this country with. All right. So, um, uh, uh, Jimmy was a soldier essentially in Dagwala's family. Um, and Jimmy became a guy who was long rooted in Costa Nostra. So now I want to fast forward all the way to get up to where I'm talking about Mikey Scars. So Mikey Scars lived with his grandfather. He lived with Jimmy, grew up in the house, a small boy. He watched in the house how his grandfather, Jimmy, maneuvered pieces, moved people around, advised people. He was taught and schooled a value system, taught about Cosa Nostra from not just a teaching standpoint, but also from watch how I do things, watch how I take care of the family, watch how I move pieces around and stuff like that. Um, so Mikey Scars, some of the people that were regularly at Jimmy's house were very important people. Jimmy Brown Fiala, um, Carlo Gambino used to come over, bring pastries and, you know, come over and ask for advice on certain things. Um, Carlo Gambino would be there. Tato, the guy who was the Goombada to Sammy the Bull. Tato Arello was there. He would come over, talk to them. These are all people that a young Mikey Scars would see when he's just a little boy. Um, Joe Gallo, who became the consigliere in the Gambino family, was a regular, another person who routinely came over to Jimmy DiLeonardo's home. Um, Joe Colombo, another one. Uh, Mikey Scars gets his name from, uh, he, was, he was attacked by a dog, bit his face. He was gushing blood out of his face. He's running out of the house as he's leaving. In is coming, incoming is... Joe Bonanno, I'm sorry, Joe Bonanno, <laughs> Joe Colombo. Joe Colombo sees Mikey Scar's blood coming out of his uh, face. Colombo reaches in his pocket, pulls out a handkerchief, and hands it to Scars. Okay, so that's the kind of people Mikey Scars grew up around. So he was regularly involved with very important people, people who became highly influential in Costa Nostra, people who were important then, people who rose all the way up to being in the administration in the family. So he was born into that world. All right. He was it. And he talks about this. Um, a person like him is not like a person like John Gotti or Sammy the Bull becoming um, how big they became in Costa Nostra. But a guy like him, he was born in the social club. He used to walk around the social club every day. John Gotti Jr., I think talked about this in an interview that he had on 60 Minutes. He said, I was born there. I was born in this life. I did, I belonged there. Um, I don't think people think about that. John Gotti Jr. gets a really tough rap from people, but he was as born, uh, in many ways, John Gotti Jr. was what uh, Mikey Scars was. Probably why they got along so well. They were both raised the exact same way. Scars grew up being around an abundance of very powerful people since the time he was a little kid. He grew up in that world. Um, uh, Junior Gotti was the exact same way, a little boy, and he was around, he was down in these social clubs, sitting there, going there after school, eating food at the social club. All the people who were his father's friends were his friends, were his, like, they were like uncles and things like that. So... But he talked about a guy like Gotti and Sammy who rise high into the underworld. It's a lot harder for them because they wasn't schooled and brought up in that world the way he was. So he says that a guy like me, it's just natural progression, natural order. Very easy for a guy like me to become a member in this life, to become made in this life because everybody I knew, everything I knew was this life. All right? So... Just under 15 minutes. I did it. Okay. <laughs> so this video, I'm going to break it up into two parts. Okay. I, for the purpose of this part of the video, I wanted to kind of go back so people understand where Mikey Scars comes from. Okay. It's really easy to, I mean, and some people don't like that I do videos this way that I kind of build them up, but I think it's important to really understand 
something present, you have to understand something in the past. A lot of what we are comes out of our early experiences, where we come from, you know, who our teachers were and things like that, who our advisors were. So I, for this part one of this video on Mikey Scars, um, I just wanted to share his roots, his history and where he comes from. So check me out on part two. In video two, I will talk about his rise to power, how he made his connections, um, when he became very powerful. And there's a lot to be said about um, on the influence that uh, Mikey Scars had. And I'm also going to share with you guys why after doing, I did a lot of research on this. So I want to share why I think the Gambino family ended up uh, putting him on the shelf, taking his businesses, taking his money. I don't know the answer, but I uh, stumbled upon some information that makes me think that's why they did it. So check out part two. Um, leave your comments, give me feedback. Um, I will respond. It might take longer than I would like, but I will respond. All right. So I got a great book coming out. The Don 36 rules of the bosses. It will be in stores this year. Please support the book when it comes out. And that's all I got. This is black handprint mafia, RJ Roger, and I'll see you guys on part two.